Welcome to St. Mary's Parish Church in Haddington and to its exciting story. It's an active church, but due to COVID-19, our usual services and activities are cancelled. But please check our website for the up-to-date arrangements. Now, let me tell you our story. It was long, long ago on a cold February at Candlemas that the town of Haddington crackled and burned. Every building was destroyed, nothing was left. Even the famous Franciscan Priory burned. They'd called it the Lamb of Lothian because of its beauty and spirituality. What happened? Well, the English King's army had once again marched north and attacked the town of Haddington. So what could the people do? Well, they waited several years, and in about 1383, they decided to build a fine new church in the shape of a huge cross. It was going to be the longest parish church in the whole of Scotland, with a length of 206 feet. That's about 68 long steps. The tower housed three bells and is 90 feet high. It may even have had a steeple crown, just like Edinburgh St Giles does. Can you see the east end? That was for the priests, and the slightly longer west end was reserved for the people. St Mary's was one of the three great collegiate churches of the Lothians. St Giles was another, and St Michael's in Lilithgow a third. In each one, a college of priests was trained to chant and sing during the services. There were some fine stone carvings both inside and outside. The top carving in this picture with the goat is the Haddington coat of arms. The pale one is one of the green men, and the grinning man next to it fell from a high gutter just a few years ago. Perhaps the sculptor was making fun of one of the masons who built the church. All Scottish churches at that time were under the powerful Church of Rome, headed by the Pope. If you had entered through the west doors in those days, the interior would have been quite dim and lit up by vivid stained glass windows, and the many candles the eight altars down each side of the church contained. Right at the far end of the church, at the east end, there would be the high altar, but you couldn't see it because it was behind a big carved screen, and that was where the priests sat. The people paid for the priests to chant the daily mass and also for the benefactors of each of the side altars. The side altars would be sponsored by local rich families or the guilds of the town, the butchers, the bakers, the hammer men, the metal workers, and so on. But tragically, St Mary's, which had taken about a hundred years to build, only remained whole and intact for about 70 years. Less than 200 years after the first stone was laid, St Mary's lay roofless, ruined and open to the skies, the rain, the wind and the crows. So what had happened? Well, it was the English army again. This time, it was Henry VIII. He wanted his young son Edward to marry young Mary, Queen of Scots, and that would gain him the Kingdom of Scotland. But it was also a time of religious conflict. Henry had left the powerful Church of Rome and made himself head of the Church in England. The Scots did not like Henry's proposal one bit, and anyway their churches were still governed by Rome. They moved quickly. Young Mary was swiftly betrothed to Francis, the Dauphin of France. She was whisked away over the sea and out of the way. After all, Mary's mother, Mary of Guise, very conveniently came from France. Henry and his son were very miffed. At different times, both monarchs sent their armies north. Edwards wrecked towns and villages and ended up by camping inside the walled town of Haddington, and thus began the 1548 Siege of Haddington. The Scots, plus their allies the French and some mercenaries, took over the church, which was just outside the town. 
Both sides exchanged cannon and musket fire. Many musket shot holes were left in the walls to this day. In fact, can you see the clusters of holes in the buttresses and around the tower windows? This is where men were hiding so they could get better shots at the enemy. A musket can take two minutes to reload, but there could be 200 musketeers. The English army became besieged within the town walls until it was finally driven out by the plague and a shortage of supplies. Haddington's siege had lasted a long 18 months. After it was all over, only the walls and the tower of St Mary's were still standing. The church was just a roofless skeleton with debris all around. At that time there was a Haddington man, a former priest called John Knox, the man with the long beard, and he wanted to be free of the powerful, corrupt Church of Rome. He'd long been preaching about change and reform, and he had a growing number of followers who also wanted to be free to read the Bible for themselves and to worship God in their own way. Many Scots agreed with him, and they wanted to worship in this new way. So too did the Haddington folk, and they wanted their church repaired as quickly as possible. However, they could only afford to repair the nave. What could they do? Well, their answer was simple. They just built a great big barrier wall to shut off all the ruins, and then got to work on the nave on the other side. Do you see where they have rebuilt the roof at the west end? But there's nothing over the other end. So, finally, twelve long years after the siege, the townspeople had their church back. Well, half of it. St Mary's was open again for worship, but now as a plain rectangular meeting place. The people worshipped God in a simple way and refused to have any decoration at all. And they had seats to sit on while listening to the long sermons from the minister in the pulpit. In addition, there were lofts, those funny-looking box galleries for the important people like magistrates, wealthy families and town guilds, so that they could see and be seen. There are four of them in this picture. In those days, there could be up to 700 people attending a service, so it was a bit of a squeeze. They had to find a way to fit everyone in. So they did a great big makeover. The arches were raised, the floor was lowered, and up went the gallery all the way round above the old curved seating. When they dug up the old floor, they found skeletons from the old, old cemetery which had surrounded the original church of long ago. In the left picture you can see what it looked like. That's the great big west window with clear glass. After many more years, it was time for another change. Look at the other picture. Down came the old gallery and up went two bigger galleries, one at either end. The big pipe organ was built in one of them. As more time went by, the people of St Mary's followed the Victorian fashion of the day, and there was a return to more and more decoration like the old medieval times. It was the age of Gothic revival. Ornate marble structures like the pulpit and communion table were donated, and colourful stained glass panes were once again inserted into the windows, one after the other, showing Bible stories. It must have been quite amazing, as people arrived each week to find yet another window filled with coloured glass, and there were eleven big windows. The Edinburgh stained glass artists did very well at that time, although two London workshops were also involved. But sadly, behind the big barrier wall, the ruins were aging with the wind and the rain. However, no one wanted the tower to come crashing down on their heads during a service, so the tower and the walls were maintained and kept strong and stable. The window mullions were also repaired. One pillar remains very crooked to this day. The masons of long ago built their pillars around tree trunks, and these slowly decayed, not helped by flooding from the nearby river. The masons certainly did not expect all their work to be exposed to the elements for hundreds of years. But by now, of course, 
The trees have since been replaced by concrete and the pillars are all now very safe. But suddenly in the 1960s, a large donation of thousands of pounds arrived in the church's coffers. Several people had had a dream that one day the ruins might be repaired and then the church would be whole once again. The idea caught on. Inspections showed that the ruins were sound. There were endless reports and meetings and big, big fundraising efforts. People were asked to donate a window or some slates or a pillar or just give money for what was needed, even down to hammers and nails. As you can imagine, there was an enormous shopping list, a huge range of stuff to search for, match up and to fit. They found lots of second-hand things. Look at the recycled list. Edinburgh's Caledonian station has just closed and there was stone to spare from there, but new things had to be made as well. For example, the church vaulting is a bit like the shape of a boat and a Suffolk shipbuilder made the new vaults using fiberglass, just like he did in his boats. When all was finally finished, the barrier wall was removed and in 1973, the big moment came and a service was once again held in the whole church. So here is St Mary's as it looks today, the new lamp of Lothian, named after the lost priory of long ago, but restored again for the glory of God and the solace of a whole community. St Mary's is still very much an active church, still welcoming visitors from around the globe, except sadly not just now due to COVID-19. Do please check our website for any changes in the arrangements and you can also share our online services. We do hope you've enjoyed this short story of St Mary's, so do come and visit our lovely church when we reopen. You will be very, very welcome. If you would like to make a donation for its upkeep, this can be done online via our website. Thank you.